Hey friends, you probably already knew about saving presets in Ableton. You simply click the little disk icon and save it into your browser. But Ableton's browser is so much more powerful than that. So first, here's something that probably half, if not more, Ableton users don't even know is possible. Check it out. So here's a preset that I made and it sounds like Finger Bib by Aphex Twin. Right? So normally folks will just click the disk icon and that will save a copy of the preset itself, the ADV file, into their user library. And so then you can call the sound up later. But what many folks don't even know is that you can record a clip and save that clip into your browser so that you can preview it instantly. I'll prove it. So here's this clip, and I'll just make the notes start right at the beginning so that we can hear this later. Now, I'm not worried about the timing of it. I'm just going to keep this part right here. So what I can do is I can go down into my user library, and then if I wanted to, I could drag this into the drift folder, right? Now check this out. Blam. So now it's living in the drift folder. It says finger bib lead. Now let's say, for example, that I'm on a completely different Ableton set. So here I am in a different Ableton set, and if I click on this clip, Right? Isn't that amazing? So you can simply drag a clip into your browser and then save it for later, but you don't even have to use this folder structure. This folder structure is crazy, right? You're <laughs> in the user library, it's like everything that you have, and there's just so much to, to go through here. So instead of doing it that way, you can just make a folder. So let's go ahead and make a folder, Ableton presets, right? Now, when I hit open, what's gonna happen is it's gonna add this to the bottom, down here, right? It's gonna add this folder. So now I can drag actual clips from my set into here and have them preview instantly, okay? So let's go back to the other set and I can just take this clip here and drag it into here. So hopefully this has already blown your mind. And if you have Ableton presets, you don't have to just save the preset. You can actually save a clip and click on it and immediately hear what it is. Like, what is this sound, right? Instead of just guessing with your presets, you actually can know what it sounds like just by dragging a clip into your browser. It's that simple. So what this does is create an Ableton Live Clip or ALC file. And I made some really amazing discoveries near the end of the video with how far you can take this stuff. So definitely stick around for that. Hopefully this video will give you a huge productivity boost when it comes to recovering and reusing your sound design work. But let's take this a step further and let's say you have a preset, Let's here's a meld device, and this preset actually has some time-based effects with it. And these time-based effects are actually synced to the clock. So I'll turn on my click track. Now that's all fine and good, but let's say that I'm in a different set. Let's go ahead and drag this in here, and let's say that this is meld time-based. Just for now, let's just say that's the name of my preset. So now I'm gonna open another set and let's go ahead and change the BPM. Let's say I'm working on a faster set, 140 beats per minute. Now check this out. I'm gonna play the clock and then start this preview. <laughs> right, how amazing is that? So I can be working on a completely different set and whatever time-based presets that I save will actually sync to whatever song I'm working on. Okay, so let's go back to that other set. So now I have an operator with a delay and a hybrid reverb after it, right? So these are still Ableton devices. So I recorded a clip of this, take a listen. Now I can take this clip, of course, and then I'll drag it into my Ableton presets folder right here in my browser. And let's go ahead and say operator lead delay reverb, right? So what I've done here is to illustrate this point, inside of my operator, I have the mod wheel adding some FM to the uh, sine wave here, so. Right, so I've printed that effect, okay, into the preview clip. So now check this out, if I preview this clip, I can hear that the mod wheel is actually doing something. So not only can I save an instrument, 
without putting it into an instrument rack with effects with it inside of this clip, I can also print the effect that the mod wheel has over the sound. So what's so amazing about this is that if you have a song that you've been working on and you have a clip in there and it's got some of these mod wheel moves that you've done, you can actually save that so that you know what that sound can do later. And that's what's so important about this. You are working on a different song in a different set, you know what it can do. And something else I should point out is that, again, if I change the BPM here, and let's just say I'm in a different set, 150 beats per minute, right? And I've got the clock launched. It's gonna play this faster. Right, so the sync aspect of this still works even though I didn't put this in an instrument rack and I have this delay that's synced, right? So yeah, I, I'm still mind blown about this stuff. Okay, so let's take this another step further. Let's go ahead and do something with audio, okay? Because this is where things can get a little more complicated. So I'm gonna take audio, I'm gonna record, I'm just gonna whistle. Okay, so here's me whistling, <laughs> and let's make it into a MIDI track. So I'll drag this audio into the MIDI track, thus making a simpler, and now I have a simpler preset with me whistling, right? Cool, so I'll go ahead and delete the audio track. Let's go ahead and make a clip of this. Okay, so here's my little clip, and that's gonna make my preview. Okay, so now I can take this and drag it into my presets, but here's where things start to change. Notice that Ableton has made a folder. Well, why would Ableton need to make a folder here? Well, that's because there's audio associated with this simpler preset. So I can call this Whistler. And now Whistler lives in samples. So what's going on here? Let's go ahead and actually look at the finder. And so looking at this, we can see this is my Ableton presets folder, okay? So thus far, there are three .alc files. But if I open this one, this is the one that contains the Whistler ALC and also samples recorded, and here's my whistling sample, okay? So going back to Ableton, the thing that's sort of disappointing about this is that Ableton can't just have the .alc file here, right? If I were to take this ALC file out of this folder, it wouldn't be able to play it, right? But because it's living in this folder, I can preview it. Now, something that you can do is you can rename this entire folder structure and call it Whistler or whatever, right? And now, when you open your Ableton presets folder, you can click on Whistler and go down to this .alc file, and of course, you can drag that into your set. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna create this, the simpler with your audio loaded into it, okay? So when you're associating audio with these things, this is what has to happen, okay? And it can get really, really wild in this situation. So for example, here, I have a drum rack, okay? And inside of this drum rack is my classic sampler with my sample zones here. And then there's 127 kicks, 127 snares, claps, hi-hats, and so forth to make this uh, ultimate drum rack possible. So this is what it sounds like. And what's so powerful about this, by the way, is that if I hit random, I can get random kits. So let's say that that is the kit that I wanna keep, okay? Now, I have a clip here, and this clip can associate everything. Remember, I can take this clip and it's gonna create what? It's gonna create a .alc file. But because there's audio associated with it, it's gonna to have to copy all of that audio that makes this clip possible into this folder that I've created called Ableton Presets. So I'm gonna drag this into here. And again, we've got that folder structure, right? And it creates a project file. And then within that, this could be my, my drum loop. So, you know, let's, I don't know what I would call this drum loop. And then inside of this, of course, is going to be the same situation, but this time <laughs> look at the sample folder imported bland. There are so many samples in here. Okay. So that is the one snag that you've got with the system thus far. So thus far, hopefully your gears are starting to turn a little bit. The reason this is awesome is that you do things that are uniquely you. When you're crafting sounds, you tend to do things a particular way that creates somewhat of like a sonic identity. So not only does saving sounds to use later save you time, but it helps you have some semblance of unity and flavor to what makes your music your music. And so if you've only been saving presets with the disc icon up until now, hopefully this represents a sea change in your workflow. And when you're working on a song, if you have an Ableton presets folder that's just stock full of the stuff you've already made, this is gonna not only save you time, but you're also gonna be able to listen to what that sound actually is or what it sounds like and bring it into your set immediately. Okay, so now before we get into the really mind-blowing stuff, Here's a word from our sponsor, which is me. If you're into sound design or Ableton in general, and you like my teaching style, 
Check out my Ableton online courses. I have consistent high ratings and rave reviews because my teaching system actually works. Now, Ableton has recognized this, and because of that, my students can get discounts on Ableton software for not only new licenses, but upgrades. Also, I'm really confident in my lessons, but if you're not stoked, you have up to 30 days to return them. All that to say, if you're struggling with your music, if you're struggling with your mixes, if you're struggling to get your stuff to sound pro, you don't have to struggle anymore. If you want to learn more about my courses, the info is down in the description. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, so up until this point, I already knew that you could create a preset with Ableton instruments and effects and drag it into the browser so that you could click it on later and preview the sound. I already knew that was possible. But since I'm a freak, I thought to myself, okay, what if I use third-party plugins? Likely you're probably a lot like me and there are some sounds that you make with third-party plugins, instruments and effects, right? So the question is, can you save those into the browser and preview them at different tempos? You ready to get your mind blown? Here is a meld instrument and I'm using the awesome Kazrog True Iron Transformer Distortion, and I'm using the Moger Foger Delay, and I'm using uh, a spring, or a, I think it's a plate, actually, yeah, it's a plate reverb to get this really dirty, cool keys sound, right? Let's call this, like, dirty analog keys, right? Okay, so let's drag this into the browser. Now, just to prove the point, let's load up a new set Different tempo, check it out. Oh my God, there it is, right? Okay, so we can load an Ableton instrument with third-party effects and preview it in the browser. So surely this is probably printing some sort of audio file, right? Let's go ahead and find this in the browser. And check it out, there's the file. There's no folder associated with it, and if I right-click on it and look at the info, we can see it's only 31 kilobytes. <laughs> what? So what Ableton's doing is it's loading the plugins that are associated with this clip into the browser and just running it from the browser. It's not even running in the set. Now you can see that my CPU has a little spike on it. If I click on this one and then click preview, we can see that the CPU is not spiking, so it's indeed loading the actual plugins into the browser just to preview that file. That is amazing. So here's a drift, and it sounds like this. But what I did is I loaded up an infiltrator and put it on this like crazy time-based wild... Right, so this is a time-based effect with a third-party VST. Surely Ableton cannot save this and then change the tempo of it later when we preview it, right? Let's find out. Okay, so infiltrator test. I'm saving it. And so this is at 150 beats per minute. Let's go to a brand new set. So of course an Ableton default set is at 120. Let's click on this. <laughs> What? It works. Insane. Okay, so if there was ever to be a stress test with this system, it would be using a third-party plugin that is using samples, and then another different third-party plugin that is using a time-based effect. So in this case, I have this UVI uh, harp here. With a time-based effect, uh, FabFilter Timeless 3, playing the delay. And so the clip sounds like this. Okay, so let's drag this into the browser and see if Ableton can contend with this. Likely not. This will be Harpy Boy. All right, so here's Harpy Boy opening up a new set. And let's make this a lot slower, like 90 beats per minute. Start the clock. Preview it. <laughs> I did not know this. This is truly mind-blowing to me, and now I'm gonna go back through all of my favorite songs and presets and just drag everything into my browser, because there's no reason not to do this. What this is gonna allow me to do is it's gonna save me so much time, because I build these crazy effects up, especially with third-party plugins, and I build these crazy instruments up, and I just, once I'm done with my song, I've lost everything that I've done, right? I, I, I've printed the audio, and yes, it's in the, it's in the set, but I don't 
have any way of later quickly previewing that sound into a new song. And and, and maybe I've made like somewhat of a, a lead or an instrument that has my sonic signature to it, right? I could just drag that into my new song, change a couple things about it to match it to the new song, such as obviously the key, but more importantly, you know, some of the different parameters. And all of a sudden, I've got a sound that's similar to another sound that I've made. It unifies all my music together, and it saves me so much time. Word, so I hope that this little experiment was just as mind-blowing to you as it is to me. I hope that you use this. I hope that this saves you time. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Much love, everybody. See you next time.